Maybe you're clicking on this video today because you're a carrot truther. Maybe you even want to build an online forum to get to know all your carrot truther friends online. And if that's the case, well, you're definitely going to want to check out today's video sponsor, Squarespace. These are the times of COVID, and it's been a very challenging time for many people, but it's also spurred a lot of new energy from creators. Now the vaccines are starting to go into arms, we're all making that slow march back towards normalcy, so many people are thinking about what their life is going to be like. Squarespace is the perfect web tool to help you make a website for whatever you want. It's the platform to use when you're ready to get started on a new web project you've been thinking about. You're looking to get in and out quick without thinking too much about what your website should look like? Well, just jump in and use one of their quick and beautiful templates to make a website that's fresh and for you like it's right out of the box. Or maybe you're more of a hands-on person, you've got lots of opinions and ideas about exactly what your site should look like. Squarespace gives you all of the customization options you could ever want with no updates, no patches, no technical BS to worry about. Once you're done setting up your website, tinkering with the design if you're so inclined, or maybe just playing around with the colors, there are so many extra features that Squarespace provides so that your website can thrive. Email campaigns, patronage portals, social integrations, member owned areas, analytics, commercial options, 24-7 customer support. It's everything you could ever want in one place. So when you're ready to get started on the next project of yours, big or small, if it involves a website, it's got to be with Squarespace. Right now, you can go to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com forward slash brain food, and you'll get 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. Carrots help you see in the dark. Most of us were taught this fact from an early age, presumably in a vain attempt to convince us to eat our vegetables. And on the surface, this makes sense. After all, carrots are rich in beta carotene and vitamin A, essential to maintaining the health of our retinas and corneas. But while carrots do have real health benefits, the idea that eating a lot of them will magically grant you night vision superpowers is a myth, one with its origins in World War II British propaganda. In September 1940, the German Luftwaffe launched the Blitz, an aerial bombing campaign against London and other southern English cities with the aim of demoralizing the British into ending the war. While the Luftwaffe initially bombed by day, ferocious resistance by RAF fighter command forced them to switch to night bombing. And while this should have made the bombers almost impossible to track and shoot down, the British had a secret weapon up their sleeve. Radar. The invention of radar came about almost by accident. In 1934, British intelligence began receiving reports that the Germans were developing some kind of death ray, which could use powerful radio waves to stall an enemy bomber's engines or even set it alight at a great distance. A special committee known as the Tizard Commission was established to investigate these claims, and while they found that the power consumption of such a death ray would make it impractical, they also came to another surprising conclusion, that a far more reasonable sized transmitter could be used to detect and track enemy aircraft long before they reached their target. The task of evaluating this possibility fell to radio expert Robert Watson Watt and his assistant Arnold Wilkins, who on February 26, 1935, used a prototype radio transmitter to successfully detect an RAF bomber flying over Daventry. The system soon became known as Radio Direction Finding and Arranging, or RADAR, and just prior to the war, a line of radar towers known as the Chain Home was erected along the Channel Coast. These provided valuable information during the Battle of Britain, allowing incoming German bombers to be detected far enough in advance for RAF fighters to be scrambled to intercept them. However, these units were extremely large and operated at relatively long wavelengths, making them all but useless for shooting down aircraft at night. Then in 1940, John Randall and Harry Boot at the University of Birmingham developed the Cavity Magnetron, a device which allowed the construction of radars light and compact enough to be mounted in aircraft. The first of these units, the Airborne Interception, or AI radar Mark IV, first entered service in early 1941 and allowed British night fighter pilots to find and shoot down German bombers in large numbers. The greatest of these aces, squadron leader John Catsize Cunningham, racked up 20 victories before the war's end, 19 of them at night. In order to conceal the secret of radar, the British Ministry of Information launched a campaign of misinformation attributing the success of pilots like Cunningham to their superior eyesight, gained through eating large amounts of carrots. According to John Stolarczyk of the World Carrot Museum, and yet Yes, there is such a thing. Somewhere on the journey, the message that carrots are good for your eyes became disfigured into improving eyesight. But this propaganda wasn't just aimed at the Germans. When the Luftwaffe began bombing by night, the British imposed a total blackout, requiring citizens to keep their lights
lights off or cover their windows with heavy blackout curtains to deny German pilots a means of locating their targets. Inevitably, blackout conditions led to a sharp increase in traffic collisions, with nearly 1,130 Britons dying in nighttime road accidents in the first year of the war alone. Soon, Ministry of Information posters appeared claiming, Carrots keep you healthy and help you see in the blackout. Other government departments also got in on the campaign, with the Ministry of Agriculture releasing a statement in December 1940 claiming, If we included a sufficient quantity of carrots in our diet, we should overcome the fairly prevalent malady of blackout blindness. Lord Walton, head of the Ministry of Food, even coined a catchy saying, A carrot a day keeps the blackout at bay. This campaign was itself part of a larger effort to change the eating habits of the British public. Being a small island nation, Britain depended on foreign imports for much of its food supply, so at the outbreak of the war, the German Navy launched a campaign of unrestricted submarine warfare against merchant ships in order to starve the British into submission. In response, the British government imposed a system of rationing on food, fuel, and other everyday products. With many staples like butter, meat, and sugar now in short supply, the government encouraged citizens to switch their diet to one richer in vegetables, which they could grow themselves in home victory gardens. The Ministry of Food's Dig for Victory campaign cast home gardening as a patriotic, war-winning duty, with Lord Walton stating, This is a food war. Every extra row of vegetables in allotment saves shipping. The battle on the kitchen front cannot be won without help from the kitchen garden. Isn't an hour in the garden better than an hour in the queue? This push for food sustainability led to a greater emphasis being put on the consumption of carrots, which were easy to grow, highly nutritious, and could be used as a mild sweetener in the absence of real sugar. Cartoon characters called Dr. Carrot and Potato Pete were used to promote vegetable consumption, while government pamphlets and radio programs like The Kitchen Front touted a wide assortment of creative and sometimes questionable carrot-based recipes, such as carrot pudding, carrot cake, carrot marmalade, carrot flan, carrot fudge, Walton pie, and even a drink called Carolyn. Children were even sold carrots on a stick in place of lollipops, and in case defeating the Nazis wasn't motivation enough to eat your carrots, the government continued to push the notion that a carrot-rich diet would prevent you from being hit by a truck during the blackout. Such was the British obsession with carrots that it even made the news in the United States, with Raymond Daniel, the New York Times London bureau chief, sarcastically remarking, Lord Walton, who is trying to wean the British away from cabbage and Brussels sprouts, is plugging carrots. To hear him talk, they contain enough vitamin A to make moles see in a coal mine. But following its entry into the war, America would also jump on the carrot bandwagon, with the New York Times printing British Ministry of Food recipes and articles stating, England grows a lot of carrots, and it's on them that she largely relies to prevent her people from bumping into lampposts, automobiles, and each other. Even more, Disney got in on the game, with Disney cartoonist Hank Porter designing a family of cartoon characters based on the British Dr. Carrot, including Carroty George, Pop Carrot, and Clara Carrot, to promote vegetable consumption to the American public. Warner Brothers also made their own contribution in the form of a wise-cracking carrot-munching rabbit called Bugs Bunny. These campaigns were so successful that by 1942, Britain found itself with a 100,000 ton surplus of carrots. But what of the original goal of the campaign? To deflect German attention away from the existence of airborne radar. While there are apocryphal stories of the Germans feeding their pilots larger amounts of carrots, most historians agree that they were not fooled by the British propaganda. According to Brian Legate, assistant curator of the RAF Museum in London, I would say that whilst the Air Ministry were happy to go along with the story, they never set out to use it to fool the Germans. The German intelligence service were well aware of our ground-based radar installation and would not be surprised by the existence of radar in aircraft. In fact, the RAF were able to confirm the existence of German airborne radar simply by fitting commercial radios into a bomber and flying over France to listen to the various radio frequencies. The campaign was far more successful on Allied civilians, with the myth of carrots being good for night vision stubbornly persisting to this day. This is not to say, however, that carrots have no effect on eye health, far from it. Mild vitamin A deficiency can lead to night blindness, the inability to see in low light, while severe deficiency can lead to a serious degeneration of the retina and cornea. Every year, an estimated quarter to a half million children go blind from vitamin A deficiency, mostly in poorer countries like Nepal and regions of India, and supplements of beta-carotene and vitamin A have proved effective in reversing much of the damage. However, vitamin A can only restore and maintain eyesight to regular healthy levels. It cannot magically grant you night vision superpowers, and an excessive amount of vitamin A can actually be toxic, although getting it in the form it comes 
grounds in carrots and other such vegetable sources will not be harmful to your body, as it won't convert it to vitamin A if it doesn't need it, unlike if you get it from an animal source like liver or an animal-based vitamin A supplement where it's already in that form. Furthermore, studies have shown that carrots are actually relatively inefficient as a source of vitamin A. As alluded to, beta-carotene is converted into vitamin A by E. coli bacteria in the gut, and it takes around 12 to 21 molecules of beta-carotene to produce just one molecule of vitamin A. So go ahead, eat as many carrots as you want, but if you really want to see in the dark and we don't ask why, then might we suggest a pair of night vision goggles? So I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please do hit that thumbs up button below and don't forget to subscribe and thank you for watching.